Hi, I'm John Nixon from Eagle Lake Woodworking and welcome to the multi-part video series on how I constructed this arts and crafts style side table. It's modeled after one of Gustav Stickley's designs, number 603. Some of the notable features include quarter sawn white oak grain displayed on all four sides of the legs. There's through mortise and tenon joinery that's been pinned with dowels. There's interlocking lower and upper cross members that give the table its strength and stability. The table features a round top that's both pleasing to the eye and elegant in design. Now the table looks deceptively simple. It demands precision and accuracy in your joinery to be successful. Another thing that's deceptive is this table itself. It's not made from quarter sawn white oak and it doesn't have through mortise and tenon joinery. But this one does. I made two tables, an authentic version and an imposter. Now the end result is very similar, but the materials, construction, and techniques are very different. I'll show you how I made both tables and you can decide which method is right for you. These tables are sturdy and versatile and look great in any home. Let me show you how they're made. The round top for the table is 18 inches in diameter and is constructed from three boards that are edge glued together and are cut into a circle on the router table. The first step in making the round top is to cut some pieces to rough length, approximately 20 inches. I'll lay out on the board to avoid any defects or knots. Then I'll use the miter saw to cross cut these boards to length. Next, I'll move over to the joiner and clean up one edge, which will allow me to rip these boards to a consistent width on the table saw. With the jointed edge against the fence, I rip the boards 7 inches wide. At the planer, I'll bring all the boards to a uniform thickness, just under 7 eighths of an inch. Now remember, I'm making two tables. One is constructed from red oak that's been covered in quarter sawn white oak veneer and the other is solid quarter sawn white oak. It's time to veneer the pieces for the top of the imposter table. You don't need any fancy tools or equipment to do veneering on the face of a board. Spread yellow glue in an even layer on the face of the board, apply the veneer, and then do the same to the back side of the board. You have to veneer both sides keep the board in equilibrium. This will prevent cupping. To make sure the veneer doesn't move around, a little bit of masking tape works well. I'm creating a stack of all three boards that have veneer applied to both sides. I'll take this stack and sandwich it between two flat call boards and then put even clamping pressure all the way around the outside of the assembly. A little bit of glue squeeze out lets you know that you've got positive pressure throughout the glue up. After the glue ups have dried, we'll trim off the excess on the router table using a bearing guided flush cut bit. Makes easy work of trimming all sides of the board. Move over to the joiner and join both edges of the board. Since this top is veneered, there's no room for leveling the top after it's been glued up. It has to be perfect. We'll pick the most pleasing grain match between all three boards and then edge glue them together. I use clamping pressure across the boards as well as some calls on the ends to keep all three boards on the same plane. Making the top for the authentic table is very similar, but we don't have the added extra step of veneering. But you can see with solid wood, it's a little bit more difficult to match the grain, even from the same board, because sometimes you have lighter and darker wood to contend with, depending on the width of the board. We'll find the most pleasing grain match and glue these boards together the same way. I'm gluing up multiple boards to make a panel one thing you want to concentrate on is getting the boards on the same plane. 
Running your finger across the joint between the boards lets you know if they're uneven. With the tops glued up for each table, it's time to cut them into a circle on the router table. I'll locate the center of each board and then make a small pilot hole. I have a pivot point that fits into the miter track on the router table. The jig has increments that represent the desired radius for the circle. I just line up the radius with the end of the miter track and this represents the distance between the pivot point and the edge of the router bit. Lock the jig in place and we're ready to cut a circle. I line up the pilot hole in the center of the board with the pivot point and then set it in place with a couple of taps from a hammer. This allows me to spin the board as I raise the bit using the motorized router lift with a foot pedal. So I'll take incremental passes. I'll rotate the board around and then raise the bit height slightly using the foot pedal. After a few passes, the bit emerges through the top and the circle is cut. Using the same pivot point, put a chamfer bit, I'll chamfer the bottom and top edge of both tabletop. To sand the tabletop, I made this nice wide sanding block. It has cork on the face and takes an entire sheet of sandpaper. It has a nice wide handle that allows me to effectively sand the tabletop and eliminate any imperfections. Well that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking to see the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics. You can access all parts of the videos in one easy viewer. Check out the photo galleries of in-process work, measured drawings, and finished projects. You can also download files associated with projects. So check it out at www.eaglelakewoodworking.com.